Next, we're going to discuss common vision disorders in young children. The first three that we'll touch on are the refractive errors, myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism. Then we'll get into strabismus and amblyopia. Myopia, or nearsightedness, means that you can see up close, but you're gonna struggle to see in the distance. Like we see in this image here, the little boy on the swing is very clear, but the girl behind him is blurry. Now, with myopia, this is going to be pretty uncommon in our infants and toddlers. Generally speaking, we see children receive their first diagnosis of myopia between eight and 12 years old, usually in the years around puberty. However, I want to make sure to mention myopia to you because we are experiencing a rapid growth of people in the United States developing myopia. We live in a very digital world and spend a lot of time in front of screens. Increased screen time has a correlation with developing myopia. We always want to encourage safe screen use that allows your eyes to take a nice little break and focus on something in the distance. Of course, with myopia, we can correct this with a pair of glasses, contacts, or whatever your eye doctor would recommend. Next, we have hyperopia or farsightedness. So with farsightedness, the objects in the distance are clear and what's up close is blurry. So in this image, we can see that our little boy on the swing is blurry, but the girl in the background is very clear. With hyperopia, this condition usually starts in infancy and a lot of children can actually outgrow their hyperopia by the time they're teenagers. Of course, to correct hyperopia, we will wear a pair of glasses or perhaps contacts. Lastly, we have an astigmatism. With an astigmatism, both near and distant objects are blurry. Astigmatisms are often caused by an uneven cornea. You can think of a normal cornea being shaped like a basketball or a soccer ball. The astigmatic cornea is shaped more like a football. So that irregular curvature is going to prevent our light rays from focusing on one spot on our retina, causing that blurred image. Astigmatisms are often inherited, so if you have an astigmatism, it's likely that your child could develop that astigmatism as well. We tend to see more complaints with an astigmatism like eye strain, fatigue, or headaches. And of course, to treat an astigmatism, the eye doctor could prescribe glasses, contacts, or whatever other option they feel is best. The next vision condition that we're going to discuss is strabismus or a crossed eye. Strabismus affects about 2 to 3% of the preschool population. We want to catch it and treat it at an early age so that it doesn't lead to permanent vision problems, including permanent vision loss later down the line. Strabismus can have the eye turning in, out, up, or down. And it's also more common in children with neurodevelopmental disorders. In order to treat strabismus, we want the child to have a complete dilated eye exam to determine that best course of treatment. But treatment options can look like a simple pair of glasses to improve focusing and redirect that line of sight. Sometimes the glasses may involve prism lenses. It may include medication, including eye drops, which help the eye to relax and calm down those overactive eye muscles, or they may be surgery to correct those faulty muscle attachments in the eyes and straighten them out. The last vision condition that we're going to talk about is amblyopia or lazy eye. Now, a lazy eye is an eye that isn't doing its job seeing. So what happens is each of your eyes sees an image that your brain puts together to see what everyone sees all of the time. With amblyopia, the eyes see such different images that the brain doesn't understand how to make them make sense. So what the brain does is it's going to suppress or kind of shut off one eye doing all of the seeing out of the clear eye. So in this case, you can see that the left eye is very blurry, the right eye is very clear. So the brain is going to shut off that left eye doing all of the seeing out of that clear right eye. Amblyopia is present in about one to 3% of the preschool population, but it is our most common cause of preventable vision loss in children. Amblyopia has a few different causes. It can be caused by an uncorrected refractive error where one eye sees a more blurred image compared to the other eye. It can be caused by strabismus or it can be caused by something blocking the eye like a cataract that the child was born with.
So to treat amblyopia, the first thing we need to do is correct the underlying vision problem. Whether that is just a simple pair of glasses for a refractive error, cataract removal surgery, muscle surgery for strabismus, whatever that underlying vision problem is, we need to correct that first. And then we need to retrain the brain. When we start retraining the brain, we are going to cover up the strong eye, forcing that weak eye to do the seeing. The most common way of doing this is an adhesive bandage patch therapy. In doing that, we wear the bandage patch over the strong eye, forcing that weak eye to do the seeing. We can also do this using drops. Essentially, those drops will blow your pupil really big, forcing you to not be able to see out of that eye, or an occlusive contact lens. The methods may vary based on what your eye doctor thinks is best for the child. However, we're always occluding that strong eye, forcing the weak eye to do the seeing. The patch can be worn for up to all waking hours, and it's very beneficial for children to do near work while patching. So things like practicing their letters, coloring, playing with dolls or trucks, those are all great things to do while a child is patching. Patching can take upwards of a year, but each patching story will be unique to each individual child. There are certain children who are at a higher risk for developing vision problems. These are children who have neurodevelopmental disorders, children who are born prematurely, and those who have readily recognizable eye abnormalities, such as strabismus, that wandering eye, or ptosis, a drooped eyelid. Other risk factors include maternal smoking, alcohol, or drug use, or a family history of vision problems. With neurodevelopmental disorders, a visual impairment can affect the child's ability to learn. In addition, there can be issues with speech and cognition. We want to make sure that we are identifying any of these possible vision problems so that early intervention can be made. Children with cerebral palsy are at a greater risk for developing refractive errors, strabismus, and amblyopia. They're also more likely to have issues with eye tracking and eye focusing skills. Children with Down syndrome are more likely to develop refractive errors, amblyopia, and strabismus. They're also more likely to suffer from poor eye focusing skills. Children with autism spectrum disorder are more likely to have refractive errors or strabismus and to also struggle with eye focusing skills. Children who are very sensitive to stimuli should be seen by an eye doctor who is trained to work with children. Children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder are more likely to develop refractive errors. Children with a convergence insufficiency can sometimes be misdiagnosed as ADHD. Convergence insufficiency means that the eyes lose alignment when the child attempts to focus on a nearby object. Common signs of a convergence insufficiency would be blurred vision or double vision, which can then cause the child to become frustrated, lose interest with that object, and try to move on to something else, which is how we can end up with that misdiagnosis of ADHD. Being outside with your child has so many health benefits. When you're outside, we want to make sure that we are keeping your child's eyes safe and protected. Wearing sunglasses is just like putting sunscreen on for your eyes. We always want to make sure that the sunglasses we're buying are UVA and UVB approved glasses. You'll find a sticker in the corner of the lens when you purchase those glasses. When you're taking your baby outside, wearing a brimmed hat can be very beneficial to shield baby's eyes from the sun. The big important thing to remember is that cataracts and age-related macular degeneration, some of our more serious adult vision conditions, can develop due to exposure to the sun. This presentation is brought to you by Prevent Blindness and the National Center for Children's Vision and Eye Health. Prevent Blindness was founded in 1908 to work on preventing blindness and preserving sight. In 2009, the National Center for Children's Vision and Eye Health was founded by Prevent Blindness to serve as a national resource center on children's vision health.